All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to Mordheim. Um, I quickly wanted to do this introduction video to the Battle of Behemoths um, to kind of explain how you're supposed to pick uh, the maps and deployments and how you're supposed to report things. So just try to put it in video form for our visual learners. It's all written down. Um, so here we have the Kittens in Snow, just this mercenary warband I made for the tournament while practicing. And if anyone likes to practice, I could play this warband as well. But anyway, I digress. Uh, the first thing you'll do is let me make sure I have this set up for desktop. Yeah, that takes over. Is you go into your trusty, rusty little Bob tournament Discord, find your friends and say, hey, I'd love to play right now. Oh, I'm available. Okay, yeah, we're both on. Let's play a match. It's that easy. You play someone when they're available and when you guys can. So you're like, okay, cool, we're playing a match. Uh, then you have to pick, figure out who the heck is the first first player. So you can go on the tournament website, and there's matches, and there's the league stage, guys. So this isn't the order you're supposed to play. This is just because I have to like do this to make it happen. Um, but it's neat because it tells you who's the home team and who's the visitor. That's about the only point of this. And that we need a way to make the tournament go, right? So, all right, I'm Kitten Paw. Let's see, I'm going to play Rain. We've decided we have time to play. You look at this, okay. You, so you'd have to find yourself in this list. There's only be one Kitten Paw versus Rain. It's right here. I'm the upper team, so I'm the home team. He is the visitor. Also, if you click Home Team Visitor. That's important in determining who vetoes the maps first. That's literally the only point of this. You can see the game score here. It's going to be a best of three. We'll get into that in a, min in a minute, though. Uh, so what we need to know from this, though, is Rain is ready to play me. I've determined I'm the home team. And so we go back into the game. All right. Well, let's get my warband ready. Uh, we've talked about you can change the equipment, whatever you want. It's like, oh man, I'm going against rain. I better start swapping these items out. You know, I want to take this consumable and not that consumable and this and that. It's going to be the best thing ever. And I'm going to need these items. You can do all this. This is no problem. And you can even say, you know what? Rain's playing the Skaven, so I better bring in this unit. This is all where you set all this up get the gear and equipment you want you're good to go and you can do that in between each round as well like each match even in the best of three let's say oh wow rain just kicked my ass I didn't expect that uh, it's best of three so in between I'm gonna bring this unit in put these consumables on and I'm good to go meanwhile he could be doing the same thing even though he won so as a bit of the strategy is countering what you've seen and figuring out which units you want to bring each time all right so I've determined though I am the home team, obviously an exhibition. Set these up. And we're playing on the five maps here. Uh, Quayside's one of them. Temple. No library. Marketplace. No middle bridge, no barracks. Statue and the palace. Okay guys? So you start by with the veto system. Say hey I'm the home team. I don't want to play on Quayside because it gives this advantages to Skaven. You know, whatever those would be. He says, okay, well, I don't want to play on Count's Statue of Count Gothard because that gives the Mercs this advantage. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't want to play on Steinhardt because this also gives the advantages. Then he obviously gets to pick the last one. It'll be, oh, I don't like Marketplace. So then we've determined we're on the Temple using that system. Okay? So you set your turn timer to 90. Backtrack is actually 2, guys. I like 2 a little bit more. No deployment. Don't ever forget to put this to 0. You'll be in trouble. Always put the route threshold to 0. This is important now. You have to turn gameplay off. You need none. Otherwise, you'll have all kinds of weird things happen. Like, that's not good. <laughs> Mode 1. So make sure that's to none. Now, deployment on Temple of Sigmar. You get to this deployment phase. Now, let's actually pick Marketplace because we use all three deployments on Marketplace. So you make this none. So you can either just say, hey, fuck it, let's do random. If you and your opponent are like, yeah, let's live large. I, I'm not that strict. Otherwise, you, I was the home team. I got to pick first. 
Now Rain would pick first and say, you know what? I don't like buyer beware, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And then that's my turn as the home team or the person who picked first. I know, you know, I get to go second. And I'll say, oh, I really hate market day. And that leaves dominating the market. So you do that on the marketplace. You don't do that on every map, though. If we get to the temple, you can only play the one mode. And I've pinned these. I believe it's uh, Temple Skirmish. So if you pick Temple, it's always going to be Temple Skirmish because I felt like the other ones gave unfair advantages. Like Locked Inside. I mean, the, it's just, you know, you can be too split up. It's too unfair. Already engaged. We don't want to do stuff like that. So if you're on the Temple, it's always going to be Temple Skirmish, guys. And as a side note, if you go south, <laughs> the tours are kind of locked. Uh, I'm pretending right here is the middle of the map with my cursor. If you go south, if you both decide to go south, you can do battle. Um, if you go, otherwise, it's more, much more, o the doors are locked down here. They're normally open during the missions. So if you go this way, you're stuck, like, going all the way. While this opponent's like, where is he? So if you, you can go through the middle, the doors are open, and fight inside the temple. And you can go north as well. Just wanted to warn you guys about that. So Otherwise, you'll be wasting an hour chasing each other. So like, hey, you want to fight south? Okay, I'll fight you in the south. Otherwise, please fight in the north middle area. Anyway, so you've picked the map. You've picked the deployment. We've talked about, I, I know Marketplace is one of them. Quayside's another one. But this is important to mention as well. Um, we're not doing the one where you engage, start engaged. Yeah, war on the waterfront. But you can't, both of these other two are very viable. Quayside Assault and Rumble on the Dock. So let's say I picked first. I was the home team. We stumbled upon Quayside. Now it's Rain's turn to pick. He either gets to pick Rumble on the Docks or Quayside Assault. You cannot play uh, War on the Waterfront. That doesn't exist. Okay? So that's Quayside. We've talked about Marketplace. And I believe the last one is Statue of Count Gotthardt where you get to pick two of them. It's either going to be Lurking Looters, I believe, and the Count Conflict. We're not doing Cornered. Because you're just too close. It just gives initiative way too much of an advantage. Uh, one team's in the middle and the other's around them. It's just kind of unfair because they're out exposed in the open. So I don't like that. All right. Otherwise, Temple was just literally one deployment. And that leaves just the Palace where there was only one deployment as well. Which I believe was Counting Coup. So keep these in mind, guys. Uh, all right, so we played our match. Um, whatever, Rain beat my ass. So it's a best of three. I was the home team, though, and now Rain, as the visitor, gets to begin the vetoing. And we also we were going to pretend we had played on Marketplace. So now Marketplace is no longer being able to be picked from. You can only pick from the four remaining maps. And now the vetoes start with Rain. And now he'll be like, I don't want Quayside. Then it's my turn. I don't want Temple. I can't take market, so we're down to our final two already. It's going to be the statue or Count's Palace. All right? And you do the same thing again. Let's say we get to this, uh, this one, since it's got another test. Since he got to pick first, I now get to pick the deployment vetoes. Okay? It just takes turns every other. And that's it. So make sure you get the rat threshold to zero. Back tracking of two. We've talked a bit about consumables. Um, now let's just say Rain beat the crap out of me again. Um, let's see, I haven't actually played with this much. Round one. Yeah, it's weird because I don't think you can report each individual score. So I posted this a bit. What you would say is he won and I lost, and then you would take your total. You get one for a win and one for an impressive kill. So he has to have at least four points, right? And let's say I killed his impressive in one battle. The score, the final score would be four to one. He won twice. He literally has to kill my impressives to win. I maybe managed one impressive kill, so the final score you'll report is four to one. Also, you will say... Kitten paw imp got five kills. 
rain imp got seven kills and I'd like to try to keep report track of these just to find yeah, it's just for fun to see who who's impressive is the most deadly this is also where you would add for proof I would just want you to add screenshots of your I've talked about who does the highest damage hit say in this match you you uh, pop off a 240 damage hit be like ooh screenshot that you can screenshot the log whatever it doesn't have to happen while it occurs just make sure you get one add it there and be like whoa you got a 250 that can be a uh, contender for the highest damage hit also at the uh, battle results when you get the game scores uh, I can't really show it here without playing but you get this game score and it down here in the bottom right corner you have the MVPs so I want to see who, which heroes got the highest game scores. So if you think like a hero got a thousand and that looks really impressive, it probably would be. Screenshot that and put the result. Maybe that'll be the highest score of the tournament. I want to see the highest impressive game score and the highest hero game score. So that's where you would add stuff like that here. You'd be like, oh, you know, let me show my MVP score from that battle. It looked really good. So you'd put those there. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the others under overview um, press the highest game score press most kills that's what we tie hardest hit hero uh, best game score and a loss so if you're impressive got like 1500 <laughs> but you still lost the match things like that it's just cute and fun to talk about I think I said I give you like a point or it just gives us something to talk about I think it's kind of fun um, we talked about consumables. Again, it's a nine players, best of three, and everyone plays each other once. Top eight move to double elimination, best of three tournament, seeded by rankings. Um, I talk a bit about reporting the scores here. Um, yeah, so I hope some of this makes sense. I, as an organizer, have never done. I don't know what I will see. I'm hoping it's clear to me. But if there's any confusion, again, just pop into the Discord. It'd be cool. I'll see if I can add a channel here. I don't know what I'm capable of. Who knows what they're capable of. Um, as far as setting this up, but maybe we can do general chat and like one for results, Bob results, and talk about results there and post hey look at this kill I got in case you don't this is kind of a clunky way sometimes here so of course obviously uh, hopefully people are into it talking about it watching twitch streams of it and we can we'll know and have a good feel and we can talk about it there as well and I'll try to keep an excel spreadsheet myself or we'll just get Marlos on it again because he's the king of that shit right right Marlos <laughs> otherwise yeah so I don't know what else to say. I hope all of that makes sense. Uh, I only have three players left to record. Steiner's on vacation. Albro, I think, is at work or vacation thing going on. And I imagine Anier is getting his together here soon. So, um, yeah, we can get the matches done here very soon, I hope. And hopefully everybody has a good time with it. Um, each match takes about 20 minutes. I mean, it depends, again, if you get the temple and one team goes south and the other goes north, yeah, that might take like an hour. But if, when you actually fight each other, it's only about 20 minutes of good combat. So, um, honestly, Temple's about the only one where you can get confused. Um, on th the statue, if you... I want people to kind of come into the middle. I think I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, it's a big circle. If you... The whole point is to not be in the buildings. In theory, impressives could go in there, and you can go around the outer ring, but I would really like to discourage that. I want you guys to at least walk into the main inner circle, so it should be pretty obvious where everyone's at. Like, you, you don't need to be going in the outer ring and getting all cute. Like, come into the middle. Uh, there's lots of cover where you can hide ranged units. There's walls. There's literally carts. You can hide down like the little side alleys, but like let's try to get out of the outer ring and fight in the middle, guys. Otherwise, the palace is pretty straightforward. Marketplace is pretty straightforward. Um, we talked about temple and quayside's pretty straightforward. 
So yeah, just watch on Temple in the south of the map. And please, for the love of God, come into the middle. Like, imagine your gladiators. That's the point of this. Run out there. Imagine the buildings or the audience in the crowd, and you're fighting in front of them inside this arena of death. It's so big that you should be able to stay out of, like, shooting and comet range, in theory. Or you should be able to, like, close the gap and run in there and beat the crap out of someone. Hopefully you've built fast, nimble, mobile armies that you can position and then crush when need be. Okay. Um, yeah. Don't know what else to say. Again, if you guys want to do some practice and whatever, this warband's available. And practice with each other. If there's any confusion, talk to each other or just send me a message. So I'd like to really get one of my own matches up and running so you guys can kind of see it as well. But if I don't play first, I don't play first. So again, hopefully this this video can help you guys kind of get some clarification on everything. All right. See you out there. I look forward to it, guys.